you know. And, oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even Mario, you, shoot, you have to kill people. You shoot the other person, and then within an instant, they're back up, and they're alive again in the game. And you get, they shoot at you, and you shoot at them for entertainment. Now, how much of this, and, and the movies, too, you know, you know, you, you you go, a kid from the hood goes and sees Denzel Washington, you know, get shot in the movie, like, you know, uh, and then next year he's in another movie, this, the same guy, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, how much of this is the sinking, you know, what part of this is like, you know, we talk about rewiring brains here, like, what part of death, you know, the finality of it is not, I have a fear that, that, that the entertainment industry, and this includes video games and movies and all that, the finality of death, of being shot to death, is not taken as serious as it was when we were growing up. You know? yeah, I, I, I would agree. I would agree. I'll have to agree and, because the fun, what it is is it's actually just kind of not really glorifying consequences or something. It's absolutely trying to ignore real consequences for action. Um, and trying to substitute, like, well, the, you know, and, the thought. And, and just like the, the the recent school shooting in Florida, if you want to go on back 20 years ago almost to Columbine in 1999 with Dylan and Claybo, they played violent video games all the time, and that link was made at that time uh, that maybe the, the playing of the excessively violent video games was a contributing factor to their, their school shooting rampage. Uh, I think well, there's a yeah, between... Go ahead. I really have to see that as as a factor. I yeah, I can't, yeah me too. I, I can't be ignored. I really don't think it can be ignored at, any longer. That, I, I, that fight, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, when you shoot somebody, it's over with for that person. And I don't think that message is getting. I don't think the media and and the and the entertainment industry is sending that message to children. You know, at an impressionable age anymore. You know, I mean, I, I just don't think it's. Uh, it's sinking like in. They, like they don't understand that they are actually hurting not only the person they're hurting, they're hurting themselves, they're hurting an extended circle of people. And my opinion where video, you know, yeah, you know what, back in the day, in 1999, video games were still sort of new and all this, you know, like, ish, I say new, but whatever. And, yep, yeah, I'm pretty, you know, he played video games and those were violent video games and those played a part in his behavior because he didn't, you know, it seemed, you know, it was a great way for him to vent, but it wasn't getting it all the way, I guess. I'm going to give him that benefit of the doubt just because I don't know him, and I'm, you know, that was almost before my recollection time. But the thing is, is that nowadays, with the way that kids function, the way that kids are wired, all right, we have to take into account many more factors other than the entertainment that they're getting. We have to take in the rearing. Is that video game their babysitter? Has that, t- has that parent had any kind of interaction with them to teach them anything about life as a parent should? Did the parent, parent, period, is what I, is my question nowadays. And hang on just one moment, y'all. Is everybody okay? Speaking of kiddos. Well, go let Jack know that um, he's fixing to be grounded. Dan, I want to take a moment to get back to our, our original topic, the uh, shooter, the woman, the okay. Nassim Agdam. And uh, this, this ties right in with something you and I were touching on earlier. Agdam's online profile shows she was a vacant activist who ran a website called com, meaning green breeze in Persian, where she posted about Persian culture and veganism, as well as long passages critical of YouTube. Her father, Ismail Agdam, uh, told the Bay Area news group from his San Diego home on Tuesday that she was angry with the Google on site because it had stopped paying her for videos she posted on the platform that she had warned, he had warned the police that she might be going to the company's headquarters. Of course, that was ignored. Uh, Ismail uh, Abdum yeah, said he reported, reported his, his daughter missing on Monday after she did not answer her phone for two days. So, I mean, the dad did know something was up. He told uh, them the family received a call from Mountain View Police at about 2 a.m. on Tuesday saying they'd found her sleeping in a car. That's when the police made contact with her there in Mountain View when she was asleep in her car. He said he warned them she might be heading to YouTube because she hated the company, but apparently the police didn't didn't see her after they talked to her, uh, and they asked her a series of questions. They decided that she was not a danger to herself or others, you know, and they let her go. 
You know, they had to. Right. Right. But, but now my, here's another question. How much, I mean, I don't know how much, I, I, I've never participated in a YouTube click program. Or, what kind of income could she have lost? I mean, I, I'm assuming, well, you know, not a well, whole lot. Well, you're like not going to get rich. That's right. And you're not going to get rich as a YouTuber and you, unless you're Logan Paul and you're literally getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of views. Uh Generally speaking, it might it might average out to about a penny per view if they watch the ad. So, I mean, to make right. any money at all, you've got to have thousands and thousands and thousands of views consistently. And uh, so I don't know what, what her level was. I, you know, now that they've taken it all down, I probably won't be able to find that unless somebody researches it and posts it. Well, I imagine she's one of these people that got upset on the principle of the thing. A lot of people who aren't making very much money on YouTube, Dan, simply got upset because they were demonetized because, once again, just like with eBay, they went after the little guys. They decided to just, well, we're going to get rid of everybody who has less than 1,000 subscribers. We're going to get rid of everybody who has less than 4,000 hours of watch time. Well, that's not a lot of people. You know, 4,000 hours of watch time is hard to achieve. It really is. Go ahead. Wow. I didn't think about that, y'all. I'm just going to let you know. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, so well, that have, to me, Rich, she might have lost like two, three hundred bucks tops, even if she was really cranking it, you know, I mean, a month. You right. Know, for what you're telling me, a penny of you. And that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying that she probably was, was more instigated on self-pride and principle than she was on the actual dollar amount. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so that, yeah, because it's, so it, it's really not hard money, you know, Motivated. It's not it's like more, income. It's not like a twenty thousand dollars a year thing. It's just it's really her play money, I guess. It might be her. Right, wa- right. It, might be one, it might be one bill or something like that, maybe. But a I lot get of that. small YouTubers literally just turn the money right back into what they're doing. You know, to buy better yeah. lighting or better cameras or better software or whatever. You know, it, it, you can't really live off of an income from YouTube unless you have many videos that go viral or or you build just a humongous number of subscribers, you know, like Logan Paul did. Uh, and I think we all know how difficult that is. That that's that's not the average person. You ain't gonna make no money no, off no, 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 gonna make no. money off of YouTube unless you own it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how they do it either, but okay. I guess advertising. Well they make money. They make money. They Yeah, they well make you got all that yeah. you can't start yeah, a video got... without an ad, I'm just saying. You know, they're selling mainstream advertising of like companies like Frito Lay and, and beer companies and stuff like that. You know, so they're getting the same kind of advertising money. I, I'd, I'd say that close like to what television used to do. Yeah, you know, in fact, a lot of the ads you used to see on TV, you will now see in front of your YouTube video if you're monetized. You know, they were slapping yeah. you know um, Energizer battery ads. You know, at the beginning and the end of some of mine. It, it was it was amusing to me to see some of the different ads that they would put at the beginning well, or the end of some of our videos. But. They, make you, they make you sit through some little funny things sometimes. They, you know, sometimes the ads are pretty good. That's whenever you know somebody who's like, I have, you know, I want to be creative, but um, this ain't the market that I can go into. So, hey, look, advertising. I'm going to go here. Finally got their day. <laughs> you know, their 15 minutes, 15 seconds advertising. They got to put something out. I like to see those because someone really creative. Hello? Dan, you're probably familiar with this, but one, here's an interesting statistic which doesn't surprise me much, and this is from the FBI. A female shooter is a rarity. An FBI study of 160 active shooter incidents between 2000 and 2013 found only six incidents, or 3.8%, perpetrated by a female shooter. So this is, is rare in, in terms of that. Just like there's very few female serial killers. It's just it's not something that is normally... No, it's not the norm for in that kind of criminal activity, and, and that and her age kind of threw me really for a big loop. You know, I, you know, you don't usually see a, an attractive young woman in, in her thirties pull out a pistol and and whack a bunch of people in a, in a, a corporate headquarters. It's not. You're right. That that doesn't that doesn't go with the the normal like you know, what what kind of shooter the person what a grudge shooter I guess is what you would call. And they've been this has been going on. They call it going postal. You know, you don't usually think of a woman, you know, especially a woman in her mid thirties, going postal in a in an office or a, in a uh, headquarters of a, of a major uh, internet company. So that yeah, you're right. It was very off off the beaten track. I'm sure through the authorities for a loop too, 
They're still probably Dan, trying to sort it out. Yeah. Dan, here's what her brother had to say. She was always complaining that YouTube ruined her life. Nassim's brother, Sharon Ogdom, told the Bay Area News Group on Tuesday night. YouTube terminated Ogdom's account following the shooting, obviously. Her Instagram and Facebook accounts have also been removed. You know, all in all, after all is said and done, I think she's just a garden variety nut. <laughs> you know? I think so, I mean, too. I think so yeah, too. Yeah, and, and she was aggravated by something that aggravated, like you said, it might have aggravated, it aggravated you, it aggravated millions of other people, but you you and these other people aren't going to take a gun and, and drive 10 hours to the headquarters and, 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 and off a couple of people and then off themselves over it. So I, I think she was disturbed individual. It, it seemed like she was living in two different worlds, you know, the, the is, Islamic Persian culture and, and, and the American, you know, uh, culture at the same time. That, that might have helped with the confusion in her life. You know, I guess, you know, a psychiatrist could pick this apart all day long. You know, it's just a tragic thing. And, and but, but the problem is, Rich, gun violence is just becoming way too common in the United States of America. It's just getting way out of control. Uh, I posted uh, on Facebook that the boy that shot up the school in, in Florida here is getting fan mail. And, and young women are sending photos of themselves nude or, or partially nude to him and propositioning. He, he's becoming like a rock star to the millennials. And uh, from what I read, uh, the article is, is the jail said they've never gotten this much mail for any single defendant in 40 years. And and I think the, it goes back to what we were saying earlier about it, young people don't understand the consequences of, of gun violence. And he has a look on him. Uh, just like it, it looks like he woke up from a nightmare and, he, and he's like, oh, crap, I'm in trouble, you know. But, <laughs> you know, he's... He, he's still alive. He's still eating meals. He's still getting fan mail. I understand the only mail that they're actually letting come through is Christian mail. Do they have death to help them? You, you'll you'll know because you still live there. But do they have death penalty in Florida still or not? Yeah, they're asking. They're going to ask for the death penalty in this particular case too. And, yeah, I bet uh, they will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, and I, I you know, I'm not. Uh, I'm a. I'm an advocate. I mean, I I, I agree with the death penalty. Right. I think this boy is is one of those rare exceptions where the system failed him. He he was deranged. He, he showed all kinds of red flags. Nobody nobody tried to treat him or, or take care of him, you know, before this happened. And you know, and, and in a lot of ways, people dropped the ball. The, the Department of Children and Families down here in Florida were aware of his problems. I think he had been bounced from a couple homes. I think uh, I'm not sure if it was biological mother, but a, a woman that raised him. As a mother had died recently, and he was already troubled and sent from one school to another, and he was like a powder keg ready to go off, and you know, and as a result, all these, and then, and then the thing that is just killing me is all these people saying it's a false flag; it didn't happen. Well, I think that's a real stress. Dan, we have Northeast Texas back on the line. Yeah. Hey, I died. my phone tried to kill itself, though, so, and it did. It succeeded. But I'm all right. I'm pretty much Jesus to my phone, and I brought it back. What's up? So, I, I mean, I know, you know, I'm going, I, I'm sure they're going to ask for the death penalty. It's, it's, it's highly political. You know, I mean, it, there's an, an outrage in, in the Florida community. Uh, I've got a cousin that's actually down there, and he's uh, part of the, um, he's doing that. Uh, advising at Gulf Coast University, which is in the same neighborhood practically as, as Parkland, and uh, you know it, 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 it's uh, okay. you know the, the governor of of the of the state has enacted a couple really weak gun control measures, like you know you got to be 21 now to buy a, a, a semi-automatic weapon. Well, you know that should have been going that should have just been without saying, you know. So and no 18 year old really. I don't, in well, my opinion. You can, be, you can go shoot one overseas, though. That's where the other people will argue about that. I mean, it's easy. Yeah. It's, I, I can see easy ways to regulate the gun control, truly, n- without it being a pain in the butt or nothing. It's just everybody look at what it is and let it be. But You know, you know that's, that's an interesting thing that you brought up. Uh, I had a I had a discussion with, it, with an actual FBI agent in, in Washington, D.C. I was talking to him about... Uh, you know the gun, how guns are regulated. You know at gun shows and stuff. And he said, you know, I'm going to tell you a little something that a lot of people don't know right now. He goes, all the got kids coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq, 
they're offered an opportunity to uh, be declared uh, having this post-traumatic stress syndrome to get a check, but as a result, they lose their rights. We're taking the rights of all of our returning soldiers home. We're taking their gun rights away immediately from the time that the, the minute they step back on U.S. soil. Is, well, that's I'm interesting, isn't it? I would suspend it. I would suspend it for further evaluation here in the home state to let yourself be at home and back to being a civilian, at, you know, with the, you know, military mentality still and history background, but be a civilian and see how you coexist with everybody else again in a non-active zone. I mean, you must be aware, duh, but everyone should always be aware. But if you're coming back and you have PTSD, if you want to go ahead and claim that and get treatment for it, because you should, you went to a hell of a, uh, on earth for a minute, understand. But you don't, you shouldn't lose your gun rights. You should have that determined by your therapist, I think. Well, I think that you can have a recommendation for whom, whomever is supposed to be given these permits. But that also goes with, like, the list of regulation type things that I would change were, were I there to do so. You know, just a simple list of rules for the entire damn country. It's not that hard. 18 years or older, no, you know, no crazy nothing. I mean, if, you know, unless it's like, I mean, I'm talking you're going to hurt other people. You got to go through, at least you got to make like a report it, that you own it. I mean, because it's a purchase or sale. It ain't going to be that hard. I mean, they can find out every single thing I buy on the internet ever. <laughs> so well, there's a loophole here in Florida called private gun sale. In other words, uh, you can run through a gun show and, and, a, and a, a uh, established dealer with all the permits and all that stuff. He has to call you in uh, well, uh, you to the, to uh, the federal the government. You have to do with cars. You but have to have uh, a sale to transfer it, title? Well, no. Here's, here's, the, here's the rub. Let, let me gonna, explain gonna, what goes on here. Yeah. And it, they haven't changed this law yet. And this is one law they didn't change as with all this. You, is you can go through all the established dealers that have a shop somewhere at a gun show. and They, they won't sell to you if you, you're on a list of persons that, that aren't considered uh, – capable of having a weapon, but you can run into an individual that's got a stand at a gun show that that you could person just go through, they told me just to, you know, a person could just go walk through and say private sale, private sale, and if somebody wants to do a private sale, one person to another, you know, like one collector, quote, collector to another, then Or me and my neighbor. Per- neighbor, right, or, or even at, a, I'm talking at a public gun show, the guy yeah, who has like his own somebody, st- somebody else, just somebody. He can sell to anybody that asks him to, and as mm-hmm. long as it's as long as it's, and it doesn't have to be documented. There's no paperwork. There's no serial number. As long as he says, "Well, I'm going to sell it to you as a private collector from one person to another." Here's an really meter gun, and you know, thank you for the three hundred dollars. He doesn't have to call it in. He doesn't have to write up the paper. But an established dealer has to do all that. See, so there is a loophole. And it hasn't been closed. Well, and even this latest well, gun violence incident hasn't yeah. closed it. Now, that Richard and this concern. woman. That enables and, gun violence in an unnecessary manner. And that should not be the way that things are done. For and nobody's that. debating right. that. You know, nobody's and talking I, about it in Florida. Nobody wants to worry about this. the things that actually can deter it that won't, won't cripple the rights that others that you know, that it would, you know, the others that it would have, you know, just absolutely taken away. You know what I mean? It won't absolutely won't take away your rights. It will help protect because, frankly, I mean, if you, you know, why would you do it that way? Because, once again, I still think the idea of just you have to register every damn firearm, I think, is just like, why is this not a thing? It, under the same thing, it ain't, you don't have to be an established dealer because you got to end up making, you know, invest time and money into that, into that title. I had a... Uh... I had a next door neighbor, Dan, who used to sell guns privately out of his home. Oh, you know, kind of on the down low, and you know, as long as he basically uh, could put word out on the street that you know he had well, I mean, guns, you know, they would actually come and purchase the guns from him right there out of his house. Now, I'm, I'm sure that was probably actionable, and he could have been eventually prosecuted in some way, but he did that, you know, for years. He was a retired gentleman and went on for at least 20 well, years, mean, yeah. and he was former law enforcement. He was retired law enforcement. So I'm sure he knew the ins and outs of what he was doing. But well, what yeah. you're describing is perfectly legal here in Florida. He, he exactly. would not never, you know, and 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 the kid, it, this kid that shot up this, you know, theoretically, if he if he were released tomorrow, right, and he went and he had a neighbor that wanted to sell him another semi-automatic AK-15 yeah, or whatever, doing that. He, he could literally buy it for cash and and. Not-